Hey, how y'all doing? I've got a new project I've got to work on. I've got to make a mantle arts and crafts style clock. I'm going to make it out of cherry and it's going to have some interesting details in it. So I hope you follow along. First of all, I have to get a couple boards out of my wood pile here. And there's a cherry board right there that I need. And there's a cherry board down there that I need. Let's start digging. I saw this clock in one of my old woodworking magazines. It looked real unique and looked like it would be a lot of fun to build. Another pretty cherry board. Big boards at a small shop. That's okay, you just have to be a little more creative. So this is just a rough drawing of what I'm going to make here. Um, it's going to be about 13 inches tall or 12, 13, I'm not really sure. Now these two, these are called the styles here. So I have to find grain in the wood that will go straight up here and not do any kind of weird stuff. What I've done is I've taken a piece of poster board and cut a 2 inch by 13 inch rectangle out of that. Now I can lay that on there and kind of get an idea as to what piece of this wood I want to use. Now, I wouldn't want to put something like that on the front style because this just completely distracts. What I want is something that's pretty straight grain. Okay, that that would work there. But to see what it would look like with the taper on it, I take this piece and slide it under at the corner down here, and I've got it marked with an inch and a quarter up there. So now I can hold it like that, and I can see what it's going to look like with the taper. So I think that looks pretty good right there. I believe that's what I'm going to go with. Now I'm going to mount my style onto this sled. So what I'll do is I'll mount it on there like this. Now one thing I want to point out is that you don't want to slide these clamps too far through here. If you get past this, you're going to trash a blade and that is not something that you love to do. Tighten that. Tighten that. That's not going anywhere. All right, that turned out real good. I like that. Nice smooth cut. And also this cutoff, I'm going to save this so that this can be used when I clamp these two sides together so I have a square clamping spot. I've cut the tapers on the styles. And I've also cut out the rails, and this is basically the position they're going to be in. I got that strip of grain that I wanted by using a little template. So I'm pleased with that. Now what I need to do is I need to cut mortises here and in here so these can be attached. And I'm going to use my mortising jig. I'll show you how that works. This may seem like overkill for such small mortises, but this Philip Morley design mortising jig is so fast and so accurate and so easy to use, I just find myself using it more and more all the time. What I have here is one of the styles, and what I need to do is I need to cut a 5 8 inch dado in this section right here. So I could use a dado blade, but I already have my saw blade in here, and it's two shortcuts. So rather than taking all the time to set up a stacked dado blade and put on an auxiliary fence, I'm just going to use two cuts to make this dado with one blade. So what I do is I take my side piece. And I put it along here and I raise the blade up to the width of this. And then I turn it and slide the fence over so that it is outside of this blade right here. Now let's see if it fits. Looks good to me. 
I've got the four pieces that are going to make up the clock face. They'll go together inside the, the frame like this. But what I want is I want a little reveal between each one of these four segments. Now I'm going to fine tune it with a block plane on each edge to get that little bit of reveal right there. Now we'll see if I need to take any more off. Put that one in there, that one there, number three and number four. I have them all numbered so that they all st stay in the same orientation. So see if I can get the little gap in here that I want. I think that looks good. I think that's about the amount of reveal that I want. What I've done is taken the four blocks of wood that make my clock face. I've numbered them and marked them where I've got to cut a quarter inch wide notch about three sixteenths or less deep on each one. So I'm putting all together and make a cut. Now the way I'm going to do this is I could do this on the router table, but I've already got a blade in here and the teeth are an eighth of an inch wide and I've got a piece of wood here that is exactly the same width as these teeth. I'm going to put this spacer against there. I'm going to put my blocks of wood against the spacer and then I'm going to take a push block and push this wood through the blade and that will cut an eighth or an eighth inch wide groove. I'm going to remove that, run it through again and that will end up being a quarter of an inch wide um, cut. It's a quarter inch wide and it's uh, about 330 seconds maybe deep. All right, I've taken them out of the clamps. There's number four. There's number three. Number two. Number one. Oh, looks like we're going to be okay here. Get these spread apart equally. I think we'll be okay. Now what's left to do is I've got to cut some ebony plugs there to put ebony plugs in each one of those squares. I'm very satisfied. So I got the rabbits cut in the styles for the sides to fit in and they'll go the sides will go in the styles like that and then I cut the rabbits in the back when this all goes together and the sides are on it like that. This is what I'm going to use for the back. I'm going to get the back out of here and that will set in there. Now then for the inside of the clock, I finished the clock face. Now I mounted clock onto a backer board and this backer board will be secured inside the frame like that with some screws and then on the front side this is what it'll look like. This is where the tile will go. The arts and craft tile that I'm putting in there. I've got still got edge detail to do on all of it but I think it's coming along quite nicely. This is the top of it and I have to cut it. I want to cut a chamfer on the this front edge and along the bottom edge. So I've got two marking gauges set up here. This is set for a half an inch and what I'll do is I'll take this marking gauge, run it along there, and make a mark on the front and both sides. I should say both ends. Need to run this at three eighths of an inch. Along this end. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Well, here's the top. I've got the bottom large chamfer cut. All the edges are chamfered 
and I'm going to secure the top on with screws and after I drill the screw holes why well, then I plan to fill them with square ebony plugs. Well, I've got it all assembled and sanded. I put small ebony plugs, and I don't know if you can see, but I pillowed the top of each one of them. This is the back. I've got a thumb hole here. Take it out. I put magnets here and just a couple washers right here. And you just to get to the battery it makes it simple. Now it's time for finish. So here it is. I'm real pleased with the way it turned out. I love the plugs in the top and everything about it. This was an extremely fun build. So if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on my next one.